Welcome to another edition of Ion Education. I'm your host, Ed Leishus, and today we'll be talking about a program that was held recently at Nashville Community College, and it deals with Alzheimer's and dementia and the hardship it puts on some families. We have two very wonderful guests with us today from the college, Professor of Nursing, Terry Williams, and a well-known uh, lecturer and keynote speaker, Phyllis de la Richie-Alaire. Very good. Very good. Very Thank you for good. being here today. Thank you for having us. Terry, uh, a lot of people might not realize, but the Nashville Community College has a very extensive nursing program. Yes, so we took our first students in in 2001, and we're a two-year program, and we prepare our students to um, sit for the uh, board exam and certifying board exam for registered nurses. Um, we have a small program, so it's uh, 24 students in the freshman level and 24 students in the senior level, which is really nice because uh, the faculty really get to know the students. It's a nice personal touch to our program. The students get uh, very rigorous academic and clinical um, experiences. So there's a classroom component where uh, they learn the you know fundamentals and the background of the diseases and um, we take them into the simulation lab. Uh, we have a 10 bed simulation lab where the students learn to practice skills and then they go out um, into the clinical setting and um, we have a variety of uh, clinical settings in the Nashua area that we use, Southern New Hampshire Medical, um, uh, the, the um, uh, hospital in Concord that we use, um, Northeast Rehab. So the students get a good variety of, of clinical experiences and um, then when they are done after the two years they're um, able to sit for the uh, NCLEX exam which if they pass they become RNs and last year we had a hundred percent pass rate and also a hundred percent employment rate of our graduates. That's fantastic but again a lot of people have always said the community college is one of the best kept secrets or diamond in the rough here That's in the right. city, and uh, I, I, I myself have just learning that since 2001 you've had this nursing program. So, uh, is it fully uh, fully uh, booked this year? So we are still accepting um, applicants for our fall class. So um, if people are interested in applying, they can contact the admissions office. And the first step is to come for a nursing information session, and all of that information is on our website. Oh, that's wonderful. Now, on March the 1st, you had your sixth program, uh, and Embracing the Journey, Compassionate Care for the Caregiver to Address Alzheimer's and Dementia. Yes, we were most fortunate to have Phyllis come back um, again for the sixth year to present um, her information on Alzheimer's. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, Phyllis, you've got quite an extensive background, and we were talking before coming on the air, and uh, this is a hardship on some families, mm -hmm. and we agreed that most caregivers don't take care of themselves and that just leads to more issues going down the road. Correct. So um, <clears throat> first, Nashua Community College has been wonderful and innovative in allowing um, this type of lecture to happen every year and this past Friday was no exception. You know, it's, it worked out very well. Nurses, we have a shortage as we know, and nurses get into nursing because they care. They care about people. Um, one thing we've learned is that the Alzheimer's dementia training is limited in most of the nursing curriculums, but Nashua Community College is different. So not only are we educating them um, around the disease and the dementia, but we're also educating them about the compassionate approach to caregiving. Um, in my research, while I was getting my, um, my master's, my graduate um, degree, 74% of those who care for someone with Alzheimer's or dementia take ill or pass away first. And we talked about this. Um, they forget their own doctor's appointments or they're just too tired to add one more in. Um, they're not eating properly. Their socialization that they used to have and, and their circle of friends is limited. So we find that it's a crisis, not only on trying to find um, a cure, for Alzheimer's, but also to try to get the, the education and the care out to the caregivers that need it. Is it because of the unknown reasons for the cause of Alzheimer's and dementia 
that makes them feel like they've done something wrong or haven't done something right in the care of their their spouse or family member? I think um, we all are, are, you know, wired to, you know, care for each other in some way or another. It's funny because I always say, and if you're Catholic, you're guilted into till death to us part. Um, but it's it, the generation that we're seeing now, um, they're very private. So they keep their, their troubles and their problems to themselves. Uh, they don't know how to reach out for help. They don't know that reaching out for help is not a sign of weakness. It does take a village. So um, it's our goal to educate nurses to do that reach out with family members when they're dealing with a patient with Alzheimer's or dementia, but also open it up to the community that's at large who is privately caring for a loved one. And they are welcome to come to this symposium in the afternoon. It's all about the caring component and a new twist on it. Um, every year we do it. Before we get into the specifics of your presentation, how is it you chose uh, this direction to go when you got your, uh, your master's? I have been working in the senior living industry for a very long time. Um, at one point, I was an executive director and ran a 66-bed assisted living community, all Alzheimer's and dementia. And the first thing I realized is um, caregivers did not personalize and really see them as human beings fighting a disease. And second, family members um, were somewhat mourning um, their loved ones that were really still there. Um, so it started to get me to think about what is it that they're missing? What is it that they're not seeing? And through that, I started to find an interest in the brain and um, wanted to learn more. So I went back and got my master's in psychology. Well, you offered a new approach to how we see those who have been diagnosed with Alzheimer's <laughs> yeah. uh, and dementia. And uh, you introduced to those who attended the two brains. <laughs> Well, I always say two heads are better than one. So <laughs> fortunately, um, medically we do biologically have what I say two brains. Um, but what we work on is when, again, we approach someone with Alzheimer's dementia, we hear many, um, even nurses say, it's, it's challenging because they're gone. They're not responsive. But meanwhile, they're sitting right there in front of you. So I looked at um, my research. I started to look at the brain. It was um, a study that was done in the early 60s. Uh, a doctor was looking at someone who was suffering with severe seizures and decided to try to cut what's called the corpus callosum. It's that little connector between the two brains. Correct, mm -hmm. Professor? All right. So what he did was he cut it. In the research, the results were the epileptic seizures stopped. At the same time, what they, didn't find, that what they didn't know was that he all of a sudden saw the right hand of this man try to strike his wife, and the left hand came in to stop it. So I went, oh, we have two independent brains. So what if we look at dementia that way? And what if we give these brains a personality? So the left brain, I call your judge. That's your intellectual side. That's your fight or flight. That's your right or wrong. Um, that's where most of your memory lives and your hippocampus. But that's, that's the left brain. And most of us, are 80% of us, are left brain led. We were educated or we were groomed in, in workforce and parenting. All our experiences created this left brain. So what I say is, when you, when you're, you have dementia, your judge retires. Now you're left with this right brain, which we do know is vital. So your right brain is your creative side. It's um, what you were wired to be from birth. We were all creative when we first started off as, as infants, uh, putting things in our mouth, trying to figure out if it was edible, <laughs> you know, learning that a stove is hot. That, that creative door explorer kind of thing is our right brain. So I gave it a name. I call it your hippie. And when you, you are diagnosed with dementia, your judge retires. And what you are seeing is the hippie side of ourselves and the hippie side of the patient. So they're not gone. We're just seeing a whole new side that has been dormant for a very, very long time. And it's a really interesting take on Alzheimer's and dementia. Some might say that that's a radical view of this. Mm -hmm. What do you say to them? 
Um, what I say is that you're thinking with your judge and let's tap into the creative side of your brain. Creatively, emotionally, you know that person's not gone. They're sitting in front of you. Um, you still feel the love. You still have the memories that you can carry for them. But every moment is a new moment. So why not embrace the now? And so if they can tap into their hippie side and take a walk on that wild side, it's a wonderfully loving, crazy ride. And they won't feel sad. They have stories now that instead of feeling sad or disappointed or angry at their loved one, they can laugh now seeing why my husband kept putting socks in the toilet. Well, why did he? I don't know, it was making me so angry. But why was he doing that? Oh, the toilet resembles a washing machine. He was trying to help. You lift the lid. You put, put the, the socks, socks in, in the hole. You push the button and it goes swirly. So when you get them to see that that's not what you think it is, you'll find that they can take a breath. And the, the stress that the caregivers carry gets a little less because they're learning to laugh instead of feeling angry. Do you find that some caregivers are perhaps in denial uh, over what has befallen their family member? Absolutely. Um, I see a lot of family members who say, well, you know, she's, she's getting older, she's just forgetful. Um, or, you know, mom's always been a little, you know, lighty about things. It's, it's a disease and it's a, it's a journey that we all know how it ends. So what we need to do is embrace that journey. The more you live in denial, the more you're missing opportunities to connect. And that's in anything in life. But we want them to understand it's not a life sentence. It's not the longest goodbye. But it's a chance to say hello and have a brand new relationship. And the anger that your mother felt all these years because you broke her, her favorite vase when, she was, when you were like 12, she forgot. So now. <laughs> It's a whole new day. And you're off so, the hook. Right. So that, exactly. So you've got to try to find those, those moments and help them. We're all, we're all emotionally intelligent human beings. We just have to sometimes have a trigger. And that's what this conference was all about, helping them see the other side of the pancake. Flip it over. There's two sides. Well, you primarily uh, focused your remarks uh, towards nurses. Mm -hmm. uh, do you find that the more mature, established nurses are harder to change, to take this approach, mm -hmm. or the younger ones just coming into nursing perhaps are a little skeptical? I find that the nurses that have been um, our heroes in the field for a long time are the most receptive because they always knew that. I mean, they're compassionate. That's why they're still doing what they're doing. But um, they didn't have the tools. And we don't necessarily give them the time. So they, uh, you'll see them in the, in the lecture hall nodding their head. They get it. And they start to share stories because they've been doing it. They just didn't realize that they were doing it from a hippie side, right? Um, the, the incoming students, I would think, we still have clay. So we, it's a chance for us to really not only teach the medical, which is amazing nursing school at Nashua, and I'm, I, I mean that sincerely, I teach all over New England, but um, the compassionate piece, we can't have them forget why they got into the program in the first place. They wanna help people. And our elder population is the fastest growing population. We have the baby boomers, I think it's eight, every 68 seconds are retiring or hitting 65. We're not equipped to handle what's coming in, in the retiree arena. So we want these nurses to stay engaged. Most of them don't pick gerontology. We're trying to change that at Nashua. We're trying to change that. You mentioned uh, holistic tools and strategies also in, in your remarks to the group. Uh, what are some of those strategies and tools? I'm not going to share all of them because we want people to come every year to this uh, symposium. But one is, um, we call it dominoes. The dominoes tool is used when, again, um, someone is asking a really tough question, especially to a nurse. 
um, someone's in the nursing home or someone's in an assisted living and they want to go home. It's usually the professional caregiver that is, is absolutely frightened by that question because they know they're not home. They don't know what to tell that person. So they tend to say, oh, well, yeah, you're going home in a few minutes. <laughs> well, that's a fiblet. That's a lie. And that's not really what they deserve. Um, so I always say domino. So you know how we used to play dominoes when we were kids? Yep. We don't do that anymore, but you line them up and they... They're not on the cell phones yet. <laughs> uh, not yet, but I'm sure we're going to get there. <laughs> so I always say answer the question that's been given in a respectful way, but one that won't cause them to, to go into a panic. So I want to go home. Oh, your home was lovely. I can't believe you were the only one to like decide to paint it pink in your neighborhood, I heard. That's the first domino. You have addressed it. They feel respected. The question was answered. Now move away from it so they don't stay there. And they'll follow you. You know, I've really always wanted to own a home. They're so expensive right now. But you know what's even more expensive? Rentals. Oh my god, I pay so much while I'm in school to go to rent. You're moving them away. Next thing you know, you're talking about the price of gas. But you address the question and domino them away. They'll follow you. And they feel very respected because they're having a conversation. Yeah, and you did it in a truthful manner. Instead of saying, oh, yeah, you'll go home in 10 minutes. Want a cookie? You know, that kind of distraction. Yeah. It doesn't work. Or we feel like they're going to get anxious. And so we give them medication. There's lots of humanistic, holistic approaches we can use that we're all capable of by just taking a moment and respecting where they are, who they are, and what they need. Where do you see research going? Any ideas? Uh, will we come up with something preventative down the road to, yes. to stem this tide? Yes, I absolutely believe we will. I think there's more and more research around genetics. There's more and more research around kind of the, the plaque that's damaging the neurons. Um, look at how much now we know about CTE and concussions. And that was something that in the medical field we've always known especially with the National Football League, but for them to finally come out, it's, it's kind of put a face with something that, you know, it used to be called um, punch drunk mm -hmm. syndrome. Well, it's, you know, boxers, right? right? But no, it's how many times did you have a concussion when you were in high school and played basketball? And now, you know, you're starting to have some memory issues. I mean, you bruise the peach. When you're younger, it heals quicker, but over time, it, it might not. So that's kind of what um, I, I see happening. We will have. I also see some changes. And my goal is to continue to teach this kind of hippie philosophy. We need to continue to humanize the person with the diagnosis. And we need to understand that it's just another side of ourselves that we've actually forgotten about. And I am seeing more and more holistic approaches that I'm, I'm starting to recognize in the care field. And the biggest thing is for the caregiver to take care of themselves. I know uh, in this area there are several uh, day away type programs that uh, have been very successful. Yep. Both uh, run uh, by one of the hospitals here and uh, a couple of the churches have them. Mm -hmm. uh, and caregivers shouldn't feel guilty, should they? No. If they drop their family member off for a day or two so that they can go to the doctor and do other things that they need time for. Well, we always, for those of us who've traveled on an airplane, what do they say if the oxygen falls from the ceiling? Put it on yourself first so you can help right. the person next to you. It's, it's care 101. If we don't take care of ourselves, we can't be good mothers. We can't be good wives. We can't be good partners. We can't be good friends. We have to take care of ourselves. And by denying ourselves the simplest things like socialization, good nutrition, and medical care almost seems barbaric. So if I said to you, I need you to ignore all of those things, you would say, but why would I do that? So sometimes we have to just get the caregiver to recognize the obvious and not feel guilty because by them bettering themselves, they're better for their partner and who they're caring for. In nursing, they need to take care of themselves. And by doing that, they will be better nurses for it too. We find that we burn them out. Yeah. We really do. Terry, six years ago, the college had a vision. 
And they began this uh, symposium, and mm -hmm. it's carried forward, and you've had a nursing program since 07? Mm -hmm. 2001. I mean, 2001, actually. rather, yeah. and uh, that, that's yeah. great. Yes. And yes. where's the, what's the website for people who might be interested in, uh, after viewing the programs, uh, looking into the nursing program? It's uh, if you just Google Nashua Community College, and then you'll find um, all kinds of information on the website. The nursing program if, is there under academics. I want to thank you both for being here today and shedding some light on a very timely topic thank and, you. and giving hope to not only the caregiver but those who are afflicted by it going forward. So thank you both. Thank you thank for you. your time. Our guests today have been Phyllis de la Richière and Terry Williams from National Community College. Thank you both. Thank, thank you. you. You've been watching Eye on Education. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next month.